Okay, defensive tactics. So defensive tactics. What do you mean, defensive tactics? Yung defensive. Ha? Huh? Huh? Defensive mga paraan. Okay, so set the philosophy is, Muni? Sir. What's for you? Answer no. Uh, Transparent, bro. Nindyan na pala ako. Kasi ah, working yeah. student ako dito, sir. Ah, okay. Pa yung nag-guard siya. Skin pick it up. Ah, okay. Actually, uh, I encountered three students who are uh, working. They are all security guards and now they are all very policemen. Police na sila. So, I just hope sa inyo, sa inyo, tsaka-tsaka lang ha. Sige, sir. Dilo sa Reyes. Ajeral Mercedes Bora. Rock, what's called? Umbol ko sa Tigilis. Sa Abasay. Punay. Sa Antonio, Basay rin? So, pwede lang mo yun lang. Okay, defensive tactics. So as defined, when we say defensive tactics, it is a system of controlled defensive and offensive body movements. Why control? Why control defensive? Bakit control defensive and offensive body movements? Because, for instance, if you are already a policeman, mga police na kayo, mga police na kayo, inaaristo nyo, or dinedepensahan nyo yung sarili nyo against the criminals, against the perpetrators, pag sumupra yung depensa nyo, mapahamak yung opponent nyo ng masyado, sumupra, hindi lang depensa, kung baga nasubrahan, you will be liable under the law. May pananagutan ka sa ilalim ng batas. So, control defensive. It is control because you have to control up to the extent yung kailangan mong gawin para mapindal mo siya or para mahuli, niya, mahuli niyo siya or kahit sa inyo pa lang, hindi pa kayo mga pulis, estudyante pa lang kayo so if you are defending yourself you have to control not to the extent na mapapatay niyo yung opponent niyo halimbawa, dinilipinsan mo lang may hawak na barel may hawak na kutsilyo Kailangan mo rin bang kumuha ng kutsilyo o kaya ba rin para may pagtanggol mo yung sarili mo? Hindi. You have to apply the so-called defensive tactics. Depensa. Usually, in my part, when I was in college, parang naano ako doon kasi kulang yung itinuturo. Some instructors kasi limited yung ipinapasok na knowledge sa amin, sa amin ng mga students. Kaya sabi ko, when, when time... When my time comes that I would be teaching my students, iibahin ko para yung mga sudyante ko may matututunan talaga. Kaya ito, control defensive and offensive body movements. Control kasi you have to control your defense. Not to kill that person or not to uh, inflict further injury when we're in, we're in hospital or ano. But if necessity, arises, meaning kung kailangan yung dipinsahan talaga yung sarili nyo. Kasi kung hindi nyo gagawin ng isang bagay, baka kayo mapahamak, baka kayo mamatay. So, kailangan yung gawin ito. Pero, kailangan kontrolado pa rin. Control, defensive. And, offensive. Why offensive by the movements? Because you have to counter. You have to inflict pain against that person para siya kumbaga masaktan ay ligtas mo yung sarili mo. For instance, ginaganon ka, sinotsok ka, o, oh, dalabang ka, laban ka, or hold up, ginaganon ka. In that instance, mahirap na yung uh, situation mo. So you have to apply offensive body movements. What are offensive body movements? Those are techniques which I would be teaching sa iyo, sa inyo. Yun ang gagawin natin. That is offensive. Meaning, uh, offensive, offensive na eh, kayo yung kakounter, kayo yung titira. Sa defensive, defensive, defensa lang kayo. But, in a safe manner. Meaning, safe ka, safe yung kuwan mo. Kasi ba, kung mamatay mo yan, baka makasawan ka pa. But, if reasonable yung gagawin mo, meaning kung tama yung gagawin mo, hindi ka sumusobra as based doon sa nire-require sa'yo, 
hindi ka mapa, kumbaga self defense lang yan. That is why we have the so-called self defense. In your subjects na iba, itatapon yan sa inyo. Sa criminal law, kung maano na kayo, sa, sa higher year na kayo, tuturo yan. So, defensive tactic, tactics is a system of controlled defensive and offensive body movements. Kasi yung classmate nyo inaantok na. <laughs> um, offensive body movements. Offensive. Kayo yung kikira. Kayo yung magka-counter. Sa defensive tactics, pwedeng criminal justice officers. Kasi criminal justice officers are sa atin dito, mga police ito. Pero sa inyo, mga sudyante kayo, future policemen, gagawin nyo rin ito ninyo. Pero kung kayo, kung baga, if an, a situation arises sa inyo ngayon, so pwede nyo gamitin yan. Self-defense lang yan. Defensive tactics. Yung mga tinuro ni sir, pero hindi naman na no, joke-joke lang. Ha? Ito yung tinuro ni sir, pakpak. But wag, hindi kasi, pag if you have a knowledge in martial arts, dapat low profile ka lang. Hindi ka mayabang, hindi ka masagulero, May walang may disiplina, walang misyo. Ako, hindi ako minom, hindi ako sumisigarilyo. Wala, mga straight lang. Kaya sabi ko, kung may ano, wag ko sunada, eh, napakamalas mo naman, George. Kasi wala tayong misyo ko. Kung baga, yung mga may misyo kasi, mahina yan. Wala yan, wala, walang physical activity. Those are persons who are, pwede natin sabihin na mahina, madaling mapagod. Kasi maraming misyo, so may sigarilyo, nagiinom, ipapahina yan. Kaya mas maganda yung walang misyo. Straight lang. So, used by criminal justice officers to respond to a subject's aggression or resistance. Aggression, meaning kung arestuhin mo siya, aggression, lumalaban, uulihin mo, o kaya ikaw mismo, sinuntok ka, tapos gusto mo siyang Hulihin o kaya gantihan, lumaban. So, dapat gamitan mo ito, defensive tactics. Ha? Then, resistance. Ayaw. Halimbawa, pulis ka na, hinuhuli mo. Ayaw mong pahuli, nanglalaban. So, mayroon siyang resistance. Kaya dapat gamitin yung defensive tactics natin. Kuha. May naintindihan? Okay, these techniques are based on a combination of martial arts. Defensive tactics are combination uh, combinations of martial arts. Wrestling, boxing, and etc. Any, any kind of martial arts. For as long, gumagamit ng defensive and offensive body movements that is a defensive tactics. Kuha? Entendian? Claro? Okay. Officers, oh by the way, I am using officers kasi I am treating you as future policeman. So you are officer. Wala namang kalalabasan yan. Kasi pag magano lang kayo, if pagsaga-saga lang, sigurado yan. Magiging polis kayo. Kaya bumbero, nasa jail officer, nasa armed forces kasi tayo, for instance, sa inyo, maging licensed criminologist na kayo, marami tayong pwedeng pasupan. Lahat, lah halos lahat. Sa uniform service, marami. Pwede kayong magsundado. In the armed forces, sa PNP, BFP, BGMP, Coast Guard, sa Bureau of Correction, marami yan. Sa NBI, basta marami tayong pwedeng pasupan. So, officers, are legally permitted to escalate the use of force. For instance, mga polis kayo, talimbawa kayo, maging polis na kayo, you are permitted under the law to escalate the use of force, meaning to increase the use of force. A anong force yan? Yun ang kanina na sinasabi ko na control. Kanina, control defensive. Ito, control but ini-escalate tinataasan mo yung level of application but it must be reasonable kailangan reasonable 
Ano yung reasonable? Meaning, karapat dapat. Hindi ka susubra. Kasi sabi ko nga, pag sumubra ka, you will be liable and that alone. May pananagutan ka sa ilalim ng batas. Pwede kang makasuhan. Halimbawa, tinutubang ka ng kutsilyo. Naagaw mo na yung kutsilyo kasi marunong ka na. May natutunan ka na. Nakuha mo yung kutsilyo. Sinangsas mo pabalik. Hindi yan. Defensive tactics. Homicide na yan. So, liable ka na. Pag makuha mo na yung weapon, huwag mo nang ibalik sa kanya. But, kung kinakailangan, <coughs> sabihin natin, nakuha mo yung kutsilyo. <coughs> May hawak na baril. Alam, ang naman ang tayo muna putok pa yung baril. Nakatutok na sa'yo eh. Kirahin mo na. But, hindi ko sinasabi na gawin mo yun. But, if necessity arises, if that instance is reasonable, meaning kailangan ba, karapat dapat ba, so gawin mo, gawin mo yun. But, if hindi, hindi na yan reasonable. So, meaning, may pananagutan ka na sa ilalim ng batas. Naisintihan? Nakuha mo na yung weapon, ibinalik mo, sinaksak mo, or binaril mo. Hindi na yan. Pwede ka nang mag mag maging uh, liable under the law on homicide. Homicide is the killing a person. Pag pinagtanuhan mo, halimbawa, gabi, duty si Kuan, hindi mo sariis, duty, may ano siya, again, inantay, mas madili, yun, murder yan. Kasi may premeditation, pinagtanuhan yung homicide, hindi. Kung baga, basta yun. Malalaman nyo yan pag nasa criminal, criminal law na kayo. So as the subject escalates his or her level of resistance. Pag, kung baga, yung pag ano niya, pag pandalaban niya para hindi siya maaristo, parang mas lalong tumataas, so tataasan mo rin yung use of force mo. Para mo siya mahuli o para mo siya mapindaw. By the way, nakaka-relate? Yes, sir. Kuha. By the way, uh, hindi lang tayo puro dito kuhan, hindi lang tayo puro physical. Kailangan kasi ito, i-inject muna sa inyo para malaman nyo kung ano yung gamit ng mga techniques na yon. Kung pwede ka bang maano yan, kung baga baka makasuhang ka or hindi. So that's why kailangan mo na may classroom discussion. After nito, lahat physical activity na tayo. Kuha? Yes, sir. Okay, the officer's choices are determined by the subject's action and the risk of physical harm posed to the officer or others. So, depende yan. Depende sa situation, depende sa kailangan, depende sa kung ano yung, kung baga, level of safety mo. Kung naninilikado ka, kung nilikado, may danger sa life mo, if your life is at risk, then you have to apply. You have to escalate. Escalate meaning increase the use of force. You have to escalate because your life is in danger. Hence, your action, your defense is reasonable. Buha? Kailangan lang dipinsahan. Kung pila mag-increase ka, kung baga dagdagan mo, hinawakan mo na, nagpukumiglas, sinuntok ka. Dahil sinuntok ka, nag-escalate siya, nag-increase siya, escalate ka rin. Kasi paano mo siya mahuhuli kung pahinahina ka? Ganun lang yung kasimple. Kung malakas siya, dapat malakas ka rin. Kung lumakas siya, dapat magpalakas ka rin. Yung lang kasimple. Kaya, ito na. Pag-aaralan nyo, kaya may practice tayo. Para kung nandun na kayo, at least alam nyo na. Kuha? Sorry, sir. By the way, we have the so-called kinds of resistance. Resistance. Ano ba yung resistance? Resist. From the word resist. Meaning ayaw. Resist. Ayaw. Ayaw niya. Hindi niya gusto. Nagre-resist siya. So we have kinds of resistance. Number one is passive resistance. Passive. From the word alone, from the word passive, alam niyo na. Ano ba yung passive? Punay. What is passive? Uh... Like we positive. 
Pasib? Yes. Pasib? Yes. Uh. Pag sinabi nating pasib, halimbawa, in layman's term, pag pasib, nag-aantay ka lang. Pasib. Ito yung opposite ng active. Active, siya yung kung baga, tumitira. Yung pasib, nag-aantay ka lang na tamaan. Parang ganun. But, sa pasib, kung baga, yun lang yung magiging reaction mo, pasib ka. Sa active, iba. Ikaw yung nagawa. But, dito sa, sa defensive tactics, sa passive resistance, it is a subject's verbal and or physical refusal. Subject's verbal and physical refusal to comply with an officer's lawful direction. Meaning, if you are a police officer, hinuhuli mo siya, lumalaban siya, ayaw niya. Kung baga, gusto mo siyang hawakan, itinutulak ka. Or sinisigawan ka. Verbal. Sir, wag sir, hindi ako, wala akong kasalanan. Yun ang pasil. Sa physical naman, verbal, nagsasalita. Sabihin na sir, wag, hindi ako, wala akong kasalanan. Bakit makunin? Yun ang pasil. Verbal. Sa physical, physical refusal to comply with an officer. Kung baga, kinawakan, nagpukumiglas. Yun ang physical. So that is passive. Passive resistance. Meaning, meron ipinapakita na hindi niya gusto. Ayaw niya. Or parang lumalaban na in, in, not, in such a way na sa tatatamaan ka or papasakitan ka niya. Ano lang? Sa salita lang. And physical. Based on the action. Nagpukumiglas. Kung baga, gusto mo siya mawakan, lumalayo. Yun ang passive. Kuha. Passive resistance is a subject's verbal and or physical refusal to comply with an officer's lawful direction. Lawful direction kasi may authority ka. You have the authority to arrest that person. Kasi nga, police ka. Hindi mo naman aristoin. But, halimbawa sa inyo ngayon, estudyante pa lang kayo, criminology students kayo, you also have the authority to arrest the person in a, in a warrantless arrest. Paano ba yung warrantless arrest? Pag sinabing warrantless arrest, walang oh, put in the act. Wala kang arrest order para arrestuhin yung tao na yun. Based on circumstance, nakita mo na siya gumagawa ng isang bagay na labag sa batas. Halimbawa, sinaksak niya, nakita mo. Nakita mo na that person is stabbed Your friend, for instance, sinaksak, nakita mo. Dahil nakita mo, you have the personal knowledge na siya yung sumaksak. So, pwede mo siyang hulihin. Based on warrantless arrest. Nakita mo. Quote in the act. Nakita mo mismo. So, pwede mong arrestuhin yan. So, causing the officer to use physical techniques to establish control. As an officer, you have to Use your physical techniques na rin ito na yung ituturo natin. First sim and second sim are all, kumbaga, martial arts tayo. Sa lift up nyo, all martial arts. First sim, basic. Then second sim, application. Yun na yung may mga thrill. May throwing na dyan, may locking na yan, ipipindam kayo, kasi tatlo lang kayo. Hanggang matapos yung klase, sigurado bukbuk sarado kayo. Hindi. <laughs> ano lang yun? Basta kasi tatlo lang kayo, hindi bantik lang yan. Importante may matutunan kayo. Then, physical techniques to establish control. You have to use your physical techniques which are being taught by your instructor to establish control that person. Para makontrol mo, para mahuli mo, or para hindi na magpatuloy doon sa ginagawa niya. Sa passive resistance, ha? Passive. Salita pa lang, and physical refusal. Hindi pa nag inflict ng pain sa iyo. Physical pa lang. Ha? Umaga, umaatras pa lang. Sir, wag, wag. Yan, physical yan. Verbal, sa salita, physical, umaatras. O kaya, any kind of resistance, wherein hindi ka pa kung baga, hindi ka pa pinatamaan nung mga ano niya or hindi pa siya lumalaban sa'yo physically na 
Tukubuging ka o babarilid ka o whatever. Kuha? Asin? Active resistance. Active. Opposite ng passive. Pag sinabing, sinabing active, ito na yung may application ng force. Laban sa iyo. It's a subject's use of physical evasive movement. Subject, by the way, ito yung criminal or perpetrator or a person to be arrested. Use of physically evasive movements. Physically. Physical. Evasive movement. Evasive, lalayo. Movements directed toward the officer such as bracing. Ano ba yung bracing? Hapin ka. Pinsing. Or pushing. Itutulak ka. Kanina, lumalayo pa lang. Sa passive, ha? Passive, lumalayo pa lang. Atras pa lang. Active, pwede ka lang itulak. Or, akapin ka, sir. Wag. Ikaw na yung akapin. Sila na yung paano. Siya na yung mahawak sa'yo para hindi mo mahuli siya. Or para hindi mo maaristo yung tao ginaaristo mo. Kasi, relative niya. And, uli, hatapin ka. Papunta ka doon, you are going to the person to be arrested, but you are being pulled by that person. Inatak ka para hindi mo siya maabutan. Inawakan ka. Yun ang active. Ha? Nakukuha na yung difference. Simple lang, di ba? To prevent the officer, officer, the police, from establishing control over the subject. Over the subject. To prevent or to control over the subject. Kuha? Kung ba? Hindi ba? Kuha? Okay lang. Okay. Basta manali lang. Pase, wala pang application ng kuhan. Atras lang, salita lang. Pag-active, may ano na. May medyo may kuhan na dyan. May application konti. Kahawak, kahawak, aakak, o natutulak. Physical, physically evasive movements. Evasive, lalayo, mag-i-evade. The next is aggressive resistance. Kanina, tutulak pa lang, ahawak pa lang, yayakap pa lang. Ngayon, meron lang so-called attacking movements. Titirahin ka na. Aggressive resistance is a subject's attacking movements toward an officer. Attacking movement, any kind of attack which may cause injury. Pwede kang ma-injured. But are not likely to cause death. Pero hindi, hindi makakamatay. Or great bodily harm to the officer or others. Aggressive. Manlalaban lang. Titirahin ka. Pero hindi pa makakamatay. Or hindi pa magkukos ng great bodily harm. Or great injury. Kung baga great damage. Kung baga yung ma-hospital ka. Hindi pa. Tinira ka pala. Halimbawa, palapit ka. Bigla kang sinipak. Ha? O, yun. Aggressive yun. Kahawakan mo. Sinuntok ka. Aggressive yun. Inanong mo lang. Inakap mo. Ginudo ka. Itrelo ka niya sa ground. Aggressive yun. Kasi, naglumaban. Nag-apply na ng Force, nag-attack na siya. Attacking movements. Pero, hindi pa makakamatay. Halimbawa, judo, nag-apply siya. Ginodo ka. Natumba ka. Pero hindi ka namatay. Hindi ka napilayan. Masyado, galos lang. Aggressive yun. Kuha? Then, next is deadly force resistance. Ito na yung delikado. Deadly force Didli, from the word alone. Mga pisaw na. May pisaw na, delikado na yan. Didli force resistance. Is a subject's hostile. Attacking movements with or without weapon. Why didli? Kasi, with or without weapon, for instance, pag ako yung inaristo, kahit wala akong hawak, wala akong hawak, I don't, Uh, handling any weapon but only my bare hands kahit 
ito lang, pwede kong sabihin na pwede akong makamatay. Kasi, depende yan, halimbawa, may alam. Ito lang, itong kamay lang, makakamatay ito. So, sa deadly force resistance, kahit walang hawak na weapon, with or without, pwedeng may hawak or pwedeng wala, that create a reasonable perception by the officer that the subject intends to cause and has the capability of causing death or great bodily harm to the officer or others. For instance, wala akong hawak. Walang hawak na weapon. Kung baga, ikaw, arestuhin mo ako. Kung kampante ka kasi, ay walang weapon yan. Pero, pag alam yung mga, kasi, yung, sa martial arts, we have the so-called pressure points. Very nitatakol natin yan mamaya. Pressure points. Pressure points are sometimes used for healing the body pains. Pwede makapagpagaling ng mga sakit sa katawan. But, pag nasobrahan, pwede rin niyang makamatay. Depende kung saan pressure points yung tamaan. For instance, ako, wala akong hawak na weapon. Alam ko kung saan pwede patamaan. For instance, dito, tirahin. Ito ang Adam's apple na to. O kaya dito, pag tinira ito, sigurado man, paglalagyan ka. So, even though I don't have any weapon, pag tapatamaan ko yan dyan, tirahin ko yan dyan, pwede kang mamatay, pwede kang ma-hospital. So, that is a deadly force resistance. Ha? Ito, from your forehead down, all the center line of your body are the vital points of your body. Vital points. Do you know what is vital? Vital points. Delikado yan pag matamaan. Dito. Dito, delikado yan. Ha? Ito dito, delikado yan. Ilong, ito. Delikado yan. Ito dito, delikado yan. Pwede kang makatulong nito. Tamaan ka. Dito, pababa. Ito. Dito, alam sa apple. Then, dito. Dito sa may, ano nyo? Ito yung sinasabing solar plexus. In between your nipple, there is a hollow point there that is your solar plexus. Then, if that is being hit, by a simple punch, pwede kang hospital niyan. Pwede kang matulog o pwede kang mamatay. Diretso yan, pababa. Dito naman sa may belly button. Then, your groin. Kaya, kung kayo yung didepend sa sarili nyo, mas maganda na kaganon kayo. Kasi dito yan sa harap. Walang dumidepend sa na ganito kasi wala kang didepend sa nito. Dito yan. Kasi ito yung pinuprotektahan mo na hindi matamaan. Ha? So that is why, in deep force resistance, it doesn't mean that even the person to be arrested is uh, not handling a weapon, he cannot resist you, kidly. Hindi, hindi yung ganun. Kasi pwede siyang, kasi kung paano kung marunong. <coughs> Expert pala sa martial arts. Yun, delikado ka dyan. Kaya that is why, in law enforcement, we have the so-called Uh, sa inyo we have the so called uh, may kasabihan tayo na sinasabi na always treat your opponent as a martial arts expert huwag magpakampante halimbawa maliit siya, malaki ka sabi mo, ah, kaya yan hindi, huwag, always treat him as a martial arts expert kasi hindi nasa laki yan hindi nasa taas yan depende yan sa kaalaman Marami pa lang nalalaman. Minaliit mo yun. Black builder pala. Ayun, tumba ka. Kawawa ang polis. Ha? Kaya, dapat always treat your opponent as a martial art expert. Hence, you don't have to relax. Dapat, ano ka? Kung baga, ikmat ba? Kuha? Deadly force resistance. And, what is physical control? Sinasabi natin yan. Wala kanina, physical control. What is physical control? Physical control is achieving compliance or custody through the use of empty hand. Through the use of empty hand. Meaning, your bare hands alone. Ito lang mga kamay, huwag lang ito na makasalanan. Ito lang. Use of Empty hand or leverage enhanced techniques. Leverage enhanced techniques. 
such as pain compliance, transporters, restraint devices, takedowns, and striking techniques. So physical control is being done by the use of empty hand or leverage enhanced techniques. Leverage enhanced techniques, ito yung ituturo na natin. Application of different techniques. In order to pro for you to provide pain or to inflict, inflict pain against your opponent or pain compliance, meaning sa physical control, mag apply ka na ng pain. mag inflict ka na ng pain against your opponent para siya matake down mo or para mahuli mo siya. Kasi kung hindi mo siya nasaktan, hindi mo siya mahuli. Alaman naman sabihin mo, o pusasan mo yung sarili mo. Meron bang ganon? Wala. Sabihin mo, o huwag kang tumakto. Huwag kang huwag mo kung suntukin ha. Huwag huwag kang manlalaban sa akin. Walang ganon. Palagi yan. La, manlalaban na manlalaban talaga yan. Sometimes kung ano naman, mabait, cooperative, okay lang. But usually all criminals are hesitant and offensive, very offensive, manlalaban talaga yan. So physical control, establish physical control by the use of your empty hand. Kamay lang or paalam. Kasi ito, kamay at paa gamit yan. Halimbawa, talian yung kamay, yung ganun. May laban ka pa, meron pa, may paa ka pa. Tinalian yung pa mo, kamay open, your hands are free. May laban ka pa. Pag tinalian mo yung dalawa, kamay ka pang pwede pa, may dila ka pang gagamitin. Pwede pa yung dila. Anything, pwede gamitin yan. Paano gamitin yung dila? Iba na yun. Basta, yun na yun. So, physical control. Alam nyo na, yung physical control. And non-lethal weapon. A non-lethal weapon. What is non-lethal weapon? Meaning, weapon na hindi nakamamatay. It's a weapon that is not fundamentally designed to cause death or great bodily harm. But, depende yan sa gamit. Sabi nyo nga kanina, yung dila, iba na yun. But, gamitin yun sa ibang paraan, pwede yun. Halimbawa, yung bullpen. Bullpen. Bullpen, bullpen, per se, technically, it is not a weapon. But, if the bullpen is, bullpen is being used in other way around, in other purpose, bullpen is just being used in writing. But, if that weapon is, a uh, bullpen is used in Stop. stopping the person, then that weapon is considered as, or that bullpen is considered a weapon. Depende yan sa gamit. Depende kung ano yung pinaggamitan. Yung dila, ay yung pinaggamitan. Ay, iba na yun. <laughs> Pero cream. yung bullpen, <laughs> bullpen, ginawang panaksak, weapon na. weapon na yun. Although that bullpen is a non-lethal weapon per se, but if that bullpen, bullpen is being used in stopping the person, then that is then a weapon. So, depende sa gamit. Ha? But, non-lethal weapon is really a weapon not designed to cause death or great bodily harm. Pero, ulitin ko, depende sa gamit. Kung ginamit in other purpose, pwede na yan maging weapon. Kuha? Halimbawa, yung, her yung hairpin. Alam mo yung hairpin? Yung pangipit ng mga girls. Pin lang yun para hindi mag-iwaywala yung buhok or hindi mag-scattered yung buhok. But if binamit yan, panaksap, binamit pang ano sa mata mo, panungkit ng mata, weapon na yan. Kasi pili ka makapulag. What? So deadly force. What is a deadly force? Deadly force is a force that is likely to cause death or great bodily harm. Force na pwedeng makamatay or pwedeng, maki, pwedeng makapagdulot ng great bodily harm, meaning great injury, malaking injury sa sarili mo sa katawan mo. Deadly force. By the way, any question? Ha? Wala? Then, we have the so-called essential criteria to determine the justification of the use of Deadly force. Essential or essential. Bahala kayo kung ano yung pagpunas dyan. Essential criteria to determine the justification of the use of deadly force. Meaning, 
uh, para nyo magamit ang sinasabing daily force or para nyo ma-justify dapat yung daily force mo is essential. Kailangan kung magkakailangan mong gawin yun. Kuha essential criteria to determine the justification or para ma-justify yung daily force na ginawa mo para ma- justify dapat essential or dapat kailangan talaga. So the term deadly force means force that is likely to cause death or great bodily harm and includes but is not limited to the firing of a firearm. The firing of a firearm is a deadly force because the gun alone is deadly weapon. Kahit hindi pinatamaan basta pinangkotok mo yung baril deadly force pa rin yan. The term deadly force means force that is likely to cause death or break body naman in close but is not limited to the firing of a firearm in the direction of the person to be arrested. Yung person to be arrested is halimbawa nandun sa likod, pinaputokan mo, pinaputokan mo, or pinutokan mo, hindi natamaan. Deadly force pa rin yun. Pinaputokan mo, hindi natamaan, deadly force pa rin yun. Kuha. Or natamaan man, the police lang, deadly force pa rin yun. Then, the firing of a firearm at a vehicle in which the person to be arrested is riding. The person to be arrested, road ay vehicle, running vehicle para makalayo siya. Pinaputokan mo yung vehicle, deadly force pa rin yun. The firing of a firearm at a vehicle, sa vehicle lang, hindi mismo yung person to be arrested. Deadly force pa rin yun. A correctional officer or other law enforcement officer is justified in the use of force including deadly force which he or she has reasonably believes to be necessary to prevent escape from a penal institution. For instance, you are a correction officer or you are a jail officer. May tumakas. Pinaputukan mo. Or patakas pa lang, pinaputukan mo, pero hindi tinamaan, deadly force pa rin yun. Ang tinitingnan dyan is the weapon, hindi yung action mo. Kasi, kung wala ka kang, wala kang weapon, ano yung puputok mo? So, kailangan may weapon. Deadly force yan. Para makonsider na deadly force, dapat may weapon ka. Sir, may go to the center. Hmm? May go to the center. Oo, oh, sige. Hmm. Okay, who wants to go to the CR? Me too. Gusto niya magsabay-sabay? Sige, break muna. yung sa tarang na nag-positive, yung ginawa nila, pinagtan nila yung katawan nila nung sapuhan yung sa vitamin C. Yung first 6 days, 6,000 mg yung wala. 2,000 sa umaga, 2,000 sa, sa tangali, then 2,000 at night. So, 6,000 yan for 6 days. Then, after noon, 1,000 mg na lang. 500 sa umaga, 500 sa gabi. So yun, kaya maraming nag-survive doon. Maraming makarecover, at saka marami yung umaga, gumaling. Yung sa amin, kasi rest kami, yun ang ginawa namin sa opisina. Nag-6 days kami, yung sa akin nga, next time ko pa, ginawa ko pang 14 days na 6,000, 6,000 ako. Para masigurado talaga. At saka nga, 1,000 na lang. At saka yan, lemon ito. Tapos ginger din. Para tumibay, yung resistensya na. At saka, papawis din. Dito, ako, magsasawa kayo dyan. Kahit magnamology kayo dyan. Pwedeng pwede. So, use of deadly force may be an officer's first and only appropriate response to perceived threat. Use of deadly force may be an officer's first 
and only appropriate response. Bakit? Kasi, if your life is at risk, if your life is in danger, using deadly force is your last remedy. Is your last resort. Panghuli na yan. Wala ka nang ibang pwedeng gawin, kundi yun na lang. Kasi para ma-save mo yung sarili mo, hindi ka magkaroon ng further injury, dapat mag-apply ka ng deadly force na. Ano ba yung deadly force? Huwag mo lang kasaksakin, huwag mo lang barilin. Intihan lang yung mga ituturo natin. Yun lang ang gagawin nyo. Different kind of para, techniques. Para meron sila na tumikid. Oo, oh, yun. Basta dito lahat, basta magtanong lang kayo, walang problema dyan. Kasi tatlo, magiging apat kayo, may babae daw, may princess na yung darating. Hmm. Nagkita nyo na, hindi pa. Hindi pa nga sir. Baka miss yung libres yun. Lift na lift na yun. <laughs> so marami na siyang, ma ano, hindi maabutan. So, dito ituturo natin yan. Sigurado yan, paglabas nyo dito, may ano kayo, may bawag kayo. I assume yun lang. And, by the way, if you want to join my club, then you are free. Pag open, pag normal na yung situation natin, pwede kayong mag-join. Sa Philippine Black Card, Karatilo Incorporated, pwede kayong mag-join. Then, if you want to join, kasi, yung Black Card kasi, may extension tayo. We have an extension at IBSO. Then, may Liti High tayo. Then, may from other places tayo. So, pili tayong magkoroon ng tournament if you want. So, kayo, magre-represent kayo ng St. Arnold Jensen. Yung iba, magre-represent ng IMSO, pero the same club tayo. Pwede yan. Pura na lang yan. Maganda yan. Actually, maganda yan. Maganda yan experience. Kasi, makikilala nyo yung mga kapwa, ano, yung mga mga o oh, kapwa estudyante, tapos yung mga club, mga club ba? Hindi lang yung club na sumasaya. Yung martial arts, yung sa atin dito. Basta, ano lang tayo, pray-pray lang na, manormalize na para maging normal na rin yung buhay natin. If you are willing, pwede natin gawin yan. Mag-join kayo, tatlo lang kayo. Baka sabihin na yun ako si Sinsi. Si Sinsi dyan, dyan kasi yung nickname ko. Si Sinsi dyan, tatlo lang, matitiba ito. Baka ano lang tayo, bubububugin tayo nito. Kaya tayo, papractice kayo kasi baka masira yung image natin. <laughs> kasi pag sinabi ka, no, hey, kay Sinsi dyan yan, ano yan. So kayo, papawis na. Kasi tatlo lang kayo, kayo yung pagbato natin doon. Para sila yung bubububin bubububin nyo. Ay, hindi, okay lang yan. Ano lang yan? Kumbaga, Or ano lang yan, pag-experience lang ba? And for, to establish the camaraderie sa iba. Hindi yung mundo nyo, hindi lang dito i-equal kasi tatlo nga lang kayo. Tsaka pag, alimbawa, palagi kayong nananalo, hindi lang kayo yung sisikat, pati rin yung school nyo. Kasi ito, di wo, formerly di wo kasi ito, divine world university, sikat to. Kaya ito, pag manormal na ito, babalik ito sa dati, Dadami na kayo dito, baka dito, hindi na tayo mag-class din dito, mga na sa kuwan. Yun. Kaya kayo, pag mag na tayo sa physical, basta practice lang. Walang sisigarilyo, walang mag-inom. Piling mag-inom. Pero kunti lang, kasi hindi naman yan maywasan sometimes. For just for experience, pili rin, pero huwag lang sigarilyo. Kasi yun ang mga kasira sa inyo. Oo, oh, sa baga. For instance, ako. Sa edad ko. Siguro, pag tingnan nyo, baka sabihin, ah, yan ang pensi, sir. Pero matanda na ako. Dahil wala, obisyo, kaya okay lang. Fit pa rin. Pwede pa rin. So, the divorce does not necessarily mean that someone died. By the use of the divorce, it does not necessarily mean that someone died. Hindi kailangan na may mamatay. From the force used. It can cause great bodily harm or no harm at all. Pwede gamitin yun. Depende. Yung great pa, yung deadly force, pwede i-apply mo na walang namatay or pwede walang masyadong nasaktan or pwede walang nasaktan talaga. Pwede yan. Depende yan sa gamit. Ha? For example, returning fire is deadly force. Even if the officer misses the target. Deadly force. Gamit ka ng deadly force. 
Nag-return file ka, pero walang natamaan. Deadly force pa rin yun. Kasi weapon. Kasi weapon yung hawak. Tama yun. Kaya, deadly force, kahit sinabi na ginamita ng deadly force, hindi, does not necessarily mean na may namatay. Or may nasaktan. O yung form may malubang nasaktan. Or may, or walang natamaan. Provided, deadly yung ginamit mo. Kuha? Yes, sir. The officer must base his or her decision to use deadly force as a defensive tactic on a clear, clear, reasonable belief that he or she, a PILO officer or another person, faces imminent danger. Huh? The officer must base his or her decision to use deadly force. Ibig sabihin, the use of deadly force must be based on imminent danger. The occurrence of imminent danger. Kung may imminent danger sa life mo or to other person, then you can use deadly force. Pwede mong gamitin. But, sabi ko nga kanina, it must be controlled. Ha? Controlled defensive. Kung pwede. <laughs> Provided, then, clear, karo, na kailangan mo talagang gumamit ng deadly force. Kasi kung hindi, ay, mahanagot ka. Ikaw yung walang kasalanan, ikaw pa yung makukulong. Kaya dapat, using a deadly force, it must be clear. Clear situation that you have to use deadly force. And, it must be reasonable. You have the reasonable belief to use deadly force. Otherwise, as what I've said a while ago, you will be liable under the law for committing a crime or a felony. Crime or felony, tatakol natin yan sa susunod. Kuha! Dapat may imminent danger, meaning there is a risk at your life or to other person or death or great bodily harm na pwedeng mangyari sa inyo or sa ibang tao. Kuha. Then, officers, three criteria for making deadly force decision. Three criteria for making deadly force decision. Para mo magamit ang sinasabing deadly force, dapat you must have the ability. Dapat may ability ka. What is ability? Ability is the position of the means or skill to do something. You possess the means or skill. Dapat may skill ka para gawin mo ang isang bagay. Ano ba yung skill? Halimbawa, use of empty hand. Tickly force with the use of empty hand. So kung ano mo magagamit yon kung wala kang ability. Wala kang skill. So that is why mayroon tayong klase para kayo matuto. Para at the end, mayroon kayong magagamit. You must have the ability. Or, for instance, with the use of a firearm, may gamit na weapon, dapat marunong kang bumaril at saka marunong kang magpatama. Kasi kung hindi ka marunong magpatama, you don't have the ability. Alimbawa, si Kilos Reyes, ng Jyoti Chan, may magnanakaw, binaril. Hindi siya marunong sa baril. Hindi marunong magpatama. Tumama doon sa kabila. Doon yung target, pumunta doon. So, wala siya mabiliti. So, for you to use deadly force, or for you to decide whether you are going to use the deadly force, you must have the ability. Dapat may alam ka. You must have the means. May, ka, may tamang kaalaman ka para gawin mo yon Meaning, kung magbabarin ka dapat, kung siya yung target, yun ang target mo. Walang ibang masasaktan o walang ibang matatamaan. Kung sinipa mo naman, tinadyakan mo pa, <laughs> hindi tumama dun sa kabila. Dapat, kung ano yung target mo, yun ang tatamaan mo. Yan. So, dapat, you must have the ability. Next is opportunity. You must have the opportunity. Though you, ma you have the ability, kahit may ability ka, but you don't have the opportunity, huwag mong gawin ang isang deadly force, ang isang deadly mo, ang deadly movement mo, or deadly action mo. Huwag mong gawin yun. Kasi, 
at hindi ka magsasaksit, iba yung matatamaan, hindi ka makulong. So, you must have the opportunity. What is an opportunity? Opportunity is a set of circumstance. A set of circumstance that makes it possible to do something. Circumstance wherein your action is possible. Pwede ka o magtatagumpay ka kasi may opportunity. Halimbawa, binaril mo, walang tao. So, you have the opportunity. Or, kung baga may pagkakataon ka na matamaan mo talaga siya. Or, kung kailangan mo siya mulihin, wala kang baril, kamay lang, nandun siya, nakita mo, may maraming tao na pwedeng tumulong, you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity. So, dapat may ability ka, may tamang kalaman, and you have the opportunity. And next is intent. Ano yung intent mo? Ano yung gusto mo? Bakit mo siya kailangan barilin? O bakit mo siya kailangan mulihin? So that is a intent or purpose. What is your purpose of firing a gun? Ano yung purpose mo? Bakit mo siya kailangan barilin? To stop. O para mag-stop. Yung pag-baril, halimbawa tumatakbo, magnanakaw. Dito, naka-duty. Nandiyan kayo tumatambay. May nag-ano. By the way, may isyo pang pera, wala. Para sa kasi hindi kami naka-agency sir. Ah, sa school lang. Oo. Oh. Ah, oh. May armes doon, tuturuan kita ng armes at saka sir, events. Marami yan. Huwag <laughs> <laughs> lang yung palo gumagano. Huwag <laughs> gumagano. Huwag. <laughs> Kawawang bata. <laughs> so dapat kasi dito, malaki yung binabarajan nyo. Mahirap. So, kung may barilin ka, ano yung purpose mo? Kailangan mo ba talagang barilin o hindi? Kasi kung tumatak mo lang, pa-escape siya, patakas, binarilin mo sa ulo, ay hindi yan. <laughs> hindi yan reasonable. Hindi yan tama. So, meaning, mananagot ka, makukulong ka. Pero pag binarilin mo sa paa, para hindi na makatakbo, yun, tama yun. Reasonable yun. Kung halimbawa naman, Tinutukan ka ng baril o yan yung kutsilyo, take down mo, nilak mo yung kamay, nabali yung kamay dahil nag-arm lock ka. Reasonable yun. Kasi bakit? Binali, binali mo yung kamay para hindi na siya makapasaksak kasi may hawak siyang kutsilyo. Reasonable yun. Depende sa situation. Depending on the occurrence. Depending, of, depending on the tending circumstance. Buha? So, depende yan. That is why dapat justified yung gagawin mo. Huwag lang susurba. Susurba. Mas alam mo yung batas, alam mo yung tama. Huwag kang mag-alala, hindi ka lalabas. Safe ka dyan. Kaya dapat, uh, yun lang sa baba. Yung, yung sa, ang may nahihing sa labas na nang bansa sa ngayon, yung mga black man ba? Yung mga napatay ng mga police. Ano yung uh, sabi mo dun? Juan? Depende yun. Hindi natin alam yun. But, yung iba talaga nang lalaban. Yung iba naman talaga, siguro, di natin alam, di natin buwan. Pero kung nang laban yun, justify yun. Halimbawa, pagpasok doon sa bahay, araw magsisim sila ng waran, pigla silang pinakutupan, nang laban, apapapap. Yung naging, naging rally-rally yung mga akuan. Kung nang rally lang, di. Pero kung ang nang rally, eh, halimbawa, may hawak ng mga bato, tinamangan yung pulis sa ulo. Uh, what I did sir? is yung dalawang dalawang mga yung issue ng boys hindi kasi napatay is ng polis yung mga yung isang negro ng America o oh, di ba yung Africa o oh, di ba na balita na na kuhaan na yung pumasok sa tapos binarin mm -hmm. na talikod pa itong nagbayaran di ba mm -hmm. tapos yung mga yung nagstop na yung NBA kasi yun yung mga so actually hindi yun ba Basta, pag nakatalikod, iba na yun. Ha? Mm. Basta, ano sure. na yun? Iba na yun. Sir, sure. can I ask, uh, lahat po ba ng uniform, uniform person na may firearms? Hindi. Actually, hindi yun. Ang may issued firearm lang yung PNP, PGMP, at saka all other uh, uniform person. Pero sa amin, sa Bureau of Pai, wala kaming issue. But, hindi natin mapagkakailan na may mga barili din yun. License para. Pero sa amin, may incoming na issuehan daw kami ng firearm. Kasi 
para sa enforcement ng ano natin, para daw makatulong sa pag ano, ng droga. Pero sana hindi na isyuhan kasi baka magkaroon kami na maraming kaso sa opisina. Marami akong investigahan at kada ko ng kuwan. <laughs> yung magbanggaan ng fire truck. Actually, hindi yung nagbagaan. Hindi, sir. Oo. Yung fire truck namin, now na yun, nauna. Yung green papunta dito, akala niya na hindi niya maabutan. Kasi paliko pa lang, medyo mabag, pare silang mabagal, but mas mabilis yung green. Kaya paglikop ng, sa amin, inabutan. Hindi na sila kapag-apply ng break. Actually, niya hindi naman niya yung driver. Na ano talaga siya. Hindi yun ang banggaan. Kasi, kung nagbanggaan yun, malaki yung fire truck namin eh. Yung kwan dito, yung dito yung body ng fire truck namin, dito siya natamaan. Kaya, pumasok sa ilalim. Buti na lang mataas yung fire truck kasi bago issue yun. Kawawal, bagong bago yun. Tapos, yun lang. Inararo lang. Hindi yun kwan. Accident di yun. Magkail mag actually magkaibig ka naman yun yung mga ano yung sa buong kanila sa kanila sa amin. Kaya nung nangyari yun para ano ba shopping ba? Okay, you have the intent, intention or purpose. Then there are couple of rules for officers to follow when using defensive tactics. Couple couple of rules for officers to follow when using defensive tactics. First, keep it simple. You have to kiss. Keep it simple. Your technique must be simple but effective. Simple technique lang. Simple technique but effective. Simple simple but effective. So paano gagawin yun? Yun ang ituturo natin pag nandun na tayo. Sa ano lang yun? Sa proper gripping, proper grabbing, rest technique, arm technique, so paano natin hawakan yun, yun lang yun. Then, maintain mental control. Pag nandun ka na sa situation na parang may ano na, may rest na, dapat maintain mo lang yung mental control mo. Dapat wala, hindi ka mawala sa sarili mo, meaning, huwag kang magpataranta, ano ka lang, kasi kung manervyos ka, hindi gagana yung moto, utak mo, hindi ka na focus. Hindi ka focus, hindi ka magiging successful. Hindi ka magiging magsasaksid para depende sa yung sarili mo o para hulihin mo siya. Sa so dapat focus lang, mental control, maintain mental control. Huwag maging kuwan. Kaya sa amin, pag nagre-respond din kami, minsan sa sobrang laki ng nirerespond yan namin, minsan hindi na maiwasan na mawala kami sa musakuan ba? Sa sobrang uh, sa sobrang kuwan mo, kumbaga pagmamadali, minsan nawawala pero dapat bumalik yun para may focus ka. Otherwise, pag wala sa focus, may disgrasya. Kaya yun ang nangyayari na may mga disgrasya ang nangyayari. Kaya, kasi wala silang mental control, wala silang focus. So dapat focus lang. Sa defensive tactics naman, dapat simple, keep it simple and maintain your mental control para makapag-focus ka kung ano yung gagawin mo. During high stress situations, maintaining mental control is not an easy accomplishment. Mahirap yan. Emotion. Kasi yes, magahalo yung emotion mo, magahalo yung emotion ng nasa paligid mo, magahalo rin yung emotion dun sa dibdib mo. Kasi sa sobrang kaba mo, sa halip na mapaputok mo yung baril mo o sa halip na gawin mo yung kung ano yung itinuro mo, minsan hindi ka na makapagalaw. <laughs> Manginginig ka na lang. <laughs> Wala na. So, dapat maintain mental control para magkaroon ng easy accomplishment. Yun sa gagawin mo. Ang nakapakos ng distraction is minsan sa paligid mo, the people are angry. Crying or hysterical. Halimbawa, may sinaksak. Pulis ka na. May sinaksak. Pupunta ka doon. May umiiyak. Nag-hysterical. Ikaw na din. Oo. Oh, so ikaw na rin. Diba? Umiiyak ka rin. So what? Maintain, maintain mental control. Pupos ka pa rin. Para ma makapag-isip ka kung ano yung gagawin mo. Pag i-investiga ka ba doon, habulin mo ba yung criminal, kukuha ka ba ng mga, mga evidence dyan, ng mga witnesses, kuhan, para magawa mo yung... Tama, nang tama yung trabaho mo, maintain lang yung mental control mo. 
Then, your mind is out of control, your body will follow. Pag yung utak mo wala sa focus, susunod yung katawan mo dyan. Kaya dapat, focus lang para sumabay yung katawan mo, yung sarili mo. Experience nyo ba yun? Yung kinakabahan ka, yung utak mo, alimbawa, no, on take sound. Pasok, hindi ako makapagbasa. Kung dating mo sa classroom, lang po yung utak mo, mararamdaman mo, yung tuhod mo, nanginginig. Yun, yun ang explanation doon. Kinakabahan ka, sasama yung tuhod, nanginginig. Yun na yung buwan. Kasi from your brain, bababa yan sa katawan. Kaya yung dalawa na, pag sumabay na yan, wala ka ng focus. Sigurado, buwan ka. Hindi ka magiging successful. Then, steps that help you maintain mental control include the following. Controlling your breathing. Para makontrol mo yung sarili mo, magkaroon ng ka ng mental control, dapat ikontrol mo yung breathing mo. Kasi pag kinakabahan ka, gumaganong ka. <laughs> Kaya pigilan mo yun. Inilig sa'yo na lang. Kahit kaya parehas ba nung binastig ka? Grabe po. <laughs> Relax ka lang. Huwag kang magbuwan. So, control your breathing. Kung mabilis yung pag-breathing yung pag mo, yung breathing mo, relax. i-control mo, relax mo. Dapat po, ang kasi sasama yan. Huwag nung-normalize yan. The ability to control your breathing relates directly to your ability to correctly assess the situation. Assess na situation. Pag na-control mo yung breathing mo, you can directly assess the situation. Meaning, makakapag-isip ka, malalaman mo kung ano yung gagawin mo kasi mamimintin na yung clear mind mo. Clear mind. Meaning, klaro sa utak mo, man. kung baga may focus ka na kung ano yung nangyayari sa paligid. Then, you should be aware of your breathing pattern. If it is fast, slow it down. Kung mabilis yung breathing mo, slow it down. Bagalan mo. Kung alimbawa, ganun ka, Parang may hikap, parang may asma, relax lang. Dapat, normal lang. Pag mabagal naman, huwag mong pabilisan. Kung mabilis, pabagalan mo. Kung mabagal, inintin mo. Kuha. Then, assessing the situation. Assess the situation. Throughout your life, and especially a career in law enforcement, you will be confronted with situations that, that will test your ability to react properly. Assess the situation. Kasi pag hindi mo i-assess, meaning hindi ka nagsize up sa situation, doon sa area o doon sa friends in, mapapahamang ka, hindi ka magiging effective doon sa trabaho mo. Assess, meaning i-observe mo yung situation. Then, experience plays an important part in how you will react, but having a clear mind plays an effect even more important role. Breath. Breath, meaning hinga. Then, avoid panic. And mentally step up and assist the situation. For instance, you are a policeman. Policeman. You are responding to a crime scene. Pasok ka doon sa room. May kalaban. Pasok mo. May kalaban. May kalaban. Pang! May patay ka. Dapat, huwag pasok agad. Huwag bira ng bira. Halimbawa, in a closed area, in, in a room, dapat huwag ka muna pumasok. Assist ka muna. Assist up ka muna. Huwag kang pa dalos-dalos para hindi mapama. I-observe mo yung paligid. I-observe mo yung sarili mo kung kaya mo or kung nakapokus ka, or kung kinakaban mo, <laughs> pasok ko, hindi mo mamatay ka dyan. <laughs> Dapat, assist muna the situation. And the next is, be flexible. Be flexible. Ano ba yung flexible? Pwede boy or pwede girl. Flexible. You must not depend on just one favorite technique. In martial arts, you must be flexible. You must not depend on just a single or favorite technique. Hindi lang isang technique. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, there are lots of martial arts, there are lots of kinds of martial arts, different kinds of techniques, but the same effect. Pwede mo ibahin yung technique, yung pamamaraan, pero the same effect. Pwede yun. Kung saan ka comfortable, yun ang gawin mo. Kung saan yung madali, yun ang gawin mo. Huwag mo na yung 
kailangan mo pang pahirapan yung sarili mo na pili ka, ikaw mismo pili kang ma-enjoy. Halimbawa, itinake down mo lang gamit yung dito kamay, yung rest manipulation lang. Pwede naman itake down mo kaagad. Hindi na yung itake down mo kasi ikot ka pa. So, na. Pag hawak, tumba ka agad. Huwag ka nang umikot na nagpapaan na may ano ka pa dyan. Kumbaga, na ano ba, napabilib pa ba? Kasi mapapahama ka. Kung ano yung pinakamabilis yun ang gawin mo. Keep it simple. Yun lang. Pabalik-balik. Keep it simple. Simple lang. But, kung hindi ka comfortable, you must be flexible. Flexible. Flexible ka. You must not depend on just one favorite technique. Instead, you must have the ability to react to any situation with an appropriate technique. So, depending sa situa situation. Limbawa, maraming technique na tinuro sa inyo paano kunin ang isang baril. Kung ano yung mabilis, yun mo gawin. Pero kung yun ang ma yun, yung mabilis na yun, hindi pwedeng gawin kasi may nakaharang o may hindrance para gawin mo yun, mag-switch ka sa ibang teknik. Pwede yun. So that is why you must be flexible. Depending on the circumstance, on what teknik you are going to apply or what teknik you are going to do in order for you to be successful in your activity or in your kuwan, kung mo'y nag-aristo ka para maging successful ka. Kuha? Simple lang, di ba? Next is pressure points in martial arts. What are the pressure points? Ito, itinaturo ko rin ito sa training center para mapabilis. Wala nang kuwan. Kung baga, wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa. Ito na. Pressure points. But sa inyo, since students pa lang kayo, You don't have to apply these pressure points, especially when you are just, kumbaga, outside joking, ha? Bawal yan, nasi delikado yun, pressure points. Nahirap yan. Dami tumatawag sa CR, labas mo nga. Maririnig niyo ba? Kung tumatawag sa CR, kung tumatawag sa CR, kung tumatawag sa CR, kung tumatawag sa CR, kung Kismodo, The vital points or the weak points. Weak. Mahina. Mahinang parte ng katawan mo. Sabi ko nga kanina, the center line of your body are the weak points of your body. The vital points of the body. But aside from that, you also have your weak points at the side. Side. Bula dito. Yan. Dito yung pinpoint. Pababa. Meron yan. Ha? So pressure points are the vital points or the weak points of the body where a blood vessel or a nerve is very close to the skin. A blood vessel or a nerve is very close to the skin. That is why that is your pressure point. Kasi nasa ilalim lang yan ang yung skin. Halimbawa, dito, 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 may pressure point yan. Beneath my skin, beneath your skin, pressure point. So, pag yan ang natamaan, kahit gaano pa yan kalaki, dito, dito, Subukan yung pisilin ito. Ito dito, yan. Ang sakit yan. Pag yan hawakan, kahit gaano ka laki yung muscle niya, sigurado yan. Sampo lang yan ng pressure point. So by putting pressure on these points, one can cause injury or induce pain. Applying the pressure point, one can be injured or He might suffer a severe pain, or can even can or can even heal some pain. Kung gusto yung pagalingin, pwede yan. Halimbawa, dito, actually ito, pag ginawa ka nito, masakit ito dito. But may purpose ito. Kung dito mo pisil-pisilin yan, masakit yung ulo mo, mawawala yan. Pag dito mo hawakan, kasi dito, connected yan dito sa ulo mo. 
Halimbawa, inaantok ka, masakit yung ulo mo, ito lang, i-massage mo lang ito. Huwag mo lang sobrahan pag minanon kasi masakit yan. Takpon yeah. lang, para ma, kumbaga, ma-relieve ka. Depende sa gamit. Kasi yung pressure points, it can heal your pain or sometimes it could induce pain. Ha? These points are at different positions in our body and hence they are used for different purposes. So, depende. Pressure points are located in different parts of our body and pwedeng magamit sa iba-ibang purpose. Depende kung ano yung gusto mo. Kung pwede mo siyang patayin, pwede. Kung pwede mo siyang buhayin, pwede. Kung pwede mo siyang itumba lang para manghina, pwede. Kung gusto mo siyang lumakas, wala yan. <laughs> Kasi weak points yun, yung pressure point. These pressure points can be used in self-defense. Pressure points can be used in self-defense if you know where that pressure point is. Kung alam nyo kung saan yung nakalugar, yung pressure point na yan, pwede nyo gamitin yun. So that is why, in this subject, you have to master where are your pressure points. Sa tingin mo pala, alam mo na kung saan nahawakan. Hindi yung halimbawa, higaganong-ganon mo pa. Hindi. Isang hawak lang. Halimbawa ako, kung tingin ko, kung sa ang pressure point, halimbawa, eh, dito yung dibdib. Kahit hindi ko kayo alam kung nasaan yan yung ano talaga, pero sa tingin ko pa lang, pag ganun ko, malalaman ko yan. Kung hindi na baga ganun-ganun pa, halimbawa, yung dito, na balipat-lipat, isang ganun lang, yan na yan. Halimbawa, sa inyo, alam ko yan. Pag ganun ko, yun na yun. Kaya dapat sa inyo, master nyo yan. Ha? Halimbawa, dito, yan, o, mat Malayo ako sa inyo. Alam ko kung di, di, kasi maki, ano yan, kung baga, makikita yan. Dito, solar, uh, solar plexus, in between your nipple, 2 inches below your kuhan, yun na yun. Kung mataba, medyo mababa. Pero kung sa atin normal, madali lang. Okay, these pressure points can be used in self-defense. Control tactics. Halimbawa, nang lalaban, nagpukumiglas. Pukumiglas. Pwede yun. Control tactics. Para makontrol nyo siya, by use, using the, the pressure point, you can control your opponent. Control tactics to pin down your opponent. Or healing and first aid. Sometimes first aid. Pwede. So these points are so dangerous. Pressure points are so dangerous. That is why I am not advising you to use these pressure points, especially when you are just joking outside. Pero yung premise na ba? Yung joke-joke lang, huwag niyong gawin yun. Use these pressure points in a situation wherein kailangan talagang gawin. If your life is in danger, use pressure point. If your action would be reasonable, then use your pressure point. Use the pressure point techniques. Otherwise, kayo yung kawawa. Kaya dapat kahit hindi kayo expert sa martial arts, hindi nyo talaga alam yung lahat, or as long you know these pressure points, may chance kayo para makaligtas, para makasurvive. Especially kung you are in a situation where in your life is at risk. If your life is in danger, for instance, chinuchok ka, makaganon, actually wala na yan. Especially kung tam na ito naka-press pa loob. Pwede pa yan. Halimbawa, nakaganan ako, nandito sa likod, inanon. Actually, paglakasan pa yan, 8 seconds, pwede ka nang mamatay. So that is why you have to react very quickly. Quick. You have to quick. You have to move quickly. Paano mo gagawin? Second lang yan. Kasi pag maglampas ka na ng 8 seconds, pwede ka nang mamatay yan. So dapat paghawak pa lang, pwede ka nang mag-side. Bakit tira ka dito sa groin? Groin is a pressure point. So, pagbaba mo, dretso, sikan lang yan. Wala na yan. Tumba na siya. Kasi mas nasaktan siya kung pwede sa dito mo. Kaya dapat, in every technique, in every pressure point that you are going to apply, it must be executed very quickly. Swift. Swift lang. Mabilisan lang. Sikan lang yan. Isang dalawan. So, that is why dito, mag, dapat matoto kayo kung paano gumalaw ng mabilis. Kasi, in martial arts, hindi, hindi pwede yung mabagal. Dapat mabilis ka. Everything must be quick. Everything must be with force. Lahat mabilis, dapat 
malakas. Yun ang sikreto dito. And meron kang concentration. Kasi kung wala kang concentration, malakas ka, mabilis ka, wala kang concentration, hindi ka magiging successful. Fail ka, failure ka. So dapat, i-master nyo yan. At your situation, at, at early as possible, as this time, so dapat malaman nyo ito. Kuha. Kahit wala tayong klase, kasi yung class natin is once a week only. Pag wala naman kayong ginagawa, huwag kayong magpataba, huwag kayong magkuhan, magpamatso kayo, magpapractice kayo dito. Para pag labas nyo, okay kayo. Healthy kayo, malakas kayo, magaling kayo. Yun lang ang kuha natin. Tatlo lang kayo, nako. Marami kayong matutunan. Basta wala lang, susuko. Ha? Walang i-irit. Sir, nakakuan. We are tired, sir. Can we stop? No. Pag sinabing stop, pag sinabing go, go, go on. Kasi everything has a purpose. Lahat may purpose yan. Halimbawa, pagod na kayo, huwag mo na magpahinga. Mamaya magpapahinga pag matapos ito. Ha? Kasi para kayong nasa academy nito, magkakulong kayo dito. Kuha? So, while making an attack, while making an attack, a person should keep the purpose of attack in mind, whether it has to be harmful or helpful. Depende sa inyo kung ano yung purpose nyo. Whether to inflict further injury or just to inflict some pain para hiya pumigil. Depende sa inyo. But, pag sabi ko nga, pag masubrahan yan, pili yan makamatay. Pressure points for self-defense. For instance, Number one is temple. Where is your temple? Your temple is this side. Dito. Ito dito. Ito parang may butas ito dito. Ito yung temple nyo. Pag dito yung pinatamaan, it can cause concussion or hemorrhage or even death. Pag dito tumatamaan, pili kang magka-hemorrhage or concussion or what is concussion concussion is an injury to the brain injury to the brain temple ito ha ang temple ang pagkano niyan hindi yan pants ha ito yung gamit niyan ito ito yung bone na to or feeling siko kaya dito ituturo ko sa inyo yung different elbow strikes elbow hindi lang ito hindi lang yung fist nyo. Meron din elbow strike. Pero sabi nga for self-defense purposes lang ha, hindi pwede mag sumubra. Hindi pwede na kumbaga mananamantala dahil may alam kayo mabububog kayo. Hindi. Kasi pag malaman ko na nabububog kayo, kawawa kayo sa akin. <laughs> pag makina tayo. So, temple. Temple is the most sensitive part of the head. Sensitive part of the head. Why? Because your skin in your temple is very thin. Manipis. Sobrang nipis nun. Ito. E ganun po lang. Nararamdaman nyo parang umaabot sa mata. E ganun lang sa mata. How much more pag malakas yung tama dyan? If it is, ha if it is hit hard, It can cause damage to the brain or it can cause concussion, hemorrhage, or even death. Pwede makamatay. Then, forehead. The forehead. The middle of the forehead. Where is the middle of the forehead? Here. Eyebrow. In between the eyebrow at the center here, this is your pressure point. The middle of the forehead between the eyebrows is a sensitive point which when attack can rock the brain and can cause concussion as well. Pag dito matamaan, maalog yung utak mo. Dito. Kasi dito pa nga lang, ginalan mo, connected din sa mata. Pag malakas yan, pwede magkaroon ka ng hemorrhage to the brain. Kaya, pag every time, halimbawa kung pinakailangan, dapat ito, 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 gamit ito, ito yung mga kuhan. Ha? Itong mga buto, ito. Ito yung may mga purpose niyan. Ito, may purpose din ito kung bakit 
Kaya pang ganun lang, pang pitik, pwede rin. Ang sakit ito, ganun nga lang, kahit dito lang sa kuha ng sakit, ang mas mo kong ikuha niyan. So the middle of the forehead, between the eyebrows, is a sensitive point which, when attacked, can wrap the brain and can cause concussion. Then nose, your nose, mapingak na nose, Pingak man o rataas na erong, pwede yan. <laughs> then, nose, a, nose is an easy target. It is sensitive and can be broken by just one face punch. Easy target ito kasi ma mahina ito. Mahina yung pundasyon niya. Kung ano yan, kung sarap yan, o pingak yan, ganun pa rin yan. Ito matamaan, halimbawa nakaharap, ganun. Pinaganun ka. Hold up, oh, hold up. Bigyan mo yung wallet mo kahit walang laman. Tirahin mo yung nose, yun na yun. Sigurado yan, alog na alog yan, dudo po yan. Tsaka ito, yung buto, pag pumasok yan sa loob, naku, delikado yan. Kaya, sabi ko kanina, center line of your body is where your pressure point is. It is where your pressure point is located. So, nose. Kung ha? Tandaan nyo lagi yan, nose. Then, throat. It can be attacked with the help of a karate chop. Sa amin, yung ituturo ko sa inyo rin, may chop tayo. Pwedeng ganon, pwedeng ganon, o pwedeng ganon. Ito, yung Adam sa apon. Pag ito yung pinatamaan, ganon pa, kore ganon, kore ganon. Sigurado, may mararamdaman yan. Pwede rin pa ganon, o pwede rin pa ganon. Pwede yan. As the wind pipe goes through the throat, A karate chop can dislocate the bone and can make breathing impossible. Or it can even cause death. For instance, yung dito, diba, yung chub dito sa loob. Yung isopagos nyo dito is chub. Pag yan nagdikit, pag na ganun yan, nagdikit yan, parang matukan nyo, parang makati. How much more ko may force? Nasa rin force na napatama dyan. Sigurado, may mararamdaman ka, hindi maganda. Kahit na lang, kahit na lang pitikin. <laughs> Tingnan ko lang, mag, hindi ka na makapuan. Hindi na makapagsalita. Actually, hitting your throat can cause death. Ha? So. Then, the, the so-called PMJ. The jaw joint. The jaw joint. Here. Tignan nyo, yung gumagalaw dito, yung joint dito, Pressure, may pressure point din yan. So, hitting your jaw joint, it can dislocate the jaw and can cause speaking difficulty. Knockdown. Oo, oh, knockdown. Di ba? Knockdown. Yan. Sa boxing, pag dito matamaan, ito yung sinasabing panga. Pag mapanga ka, kahit gaano ka kalaki, gaano ka kalakas, pag matamaan ka, sigurado, kahit ako, matamaan, ay nagpatulog yan sa amin. Kasi, kasi kaya ito protektahan nyo. Magwapo man yan o pangit kagaya ko. Ano nyo, alagaan nyo yan. Kasi pag matamaan, kawawa kayo dyan. <laughs> kaya, magkano kayo pinipilang kumakal. <laughs> may opponent kayo, alimbawa, in your sparring session, kasi may sparring tayo ito, pwede kayo kumakal. <laughs> <laughs> TMJ The jaw joint Then the collar bone Putting pressure with The jab fingers In the depression of the collar bone Can drop down the person The collar bone, where's your collar bone? Collar bone here Ito dito Pag i-prelation sa ilalim Wala yan, sigurado Baka mo sa ihing na dyan and drop down the person. Magpapatumbayan ng tao. Ay, tanunin mo lang. Ay, tanunin mo lang. How much more kung igaganan mo? Kaya yung iba noon, when I was still young, when I was roaming around at the mulli, because in my time, I was just a goan. Kung baga, I was just a smoke. I smoke ko mo yung doorbell. May, may sinasaksak ng ice pick. Dito na tamaan niya. Pag dito na tamaan, wala na yan. Patay kaya na agad. Kasi ito dito, halo point, ito butas yan. Pag, pag maalis itong skin na ito dito, 
butas yan sa ilalim yung diretsyo yan kaya pag matamaan yan dyan sigurado pressure point kasi yan in your color, color bone you need to be you need to be quick and accurate in the position dapat mabilis kayo kasi kung pababagal-bagal ka kasi dito yan nabutan kaya ang opponent mo kaya dapat dito palaging mabilis mabilis palagi para hindi ka maabutan or para maging effective ka the next is sternum it is the center of the chest where there are no muscles a straight and hard parts can break the bones it can be fatal where is your sternum? here at the center 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 of the chest wala matingnan yan do wala kasing muscle ito buto lang pag dito matamaan yan magcrack yan wala na sternum in between your chest dito di ba dito may muscle may laman dito dito sa gitna di ba na kunyo pa may buto dito yung sternum nyo then solar plexus sa baba ng sternum is your solar plexus ito na yung sorok-sorok sinasabi sa waray-waray it is one of the most sensitive parts and is a very easy target. Your solar plexus is the most sensitive part and is a very easy target. Why? Because dito yan, klarong-klaro yan. Halimbawa, nakaganon, oh, open yan. Nakaganon, open, nakaganon. Papasok pa rin. Kaya, your solar plexus is an easy target. So, sa spahing, yung pwede gano'n na lang kayo. O, pwede gano'n na lang. Para hindi patamahan. Kasi, delikado. Baka manakdam kayo. So, it is the most sensitive part and it's a basic, very easy target. It is located in the middle, right at the end of the rib joint, which is just 1 to 2 inches below the chest. 1 to 2 inches below the chest in between the rib cage in between the rib cage at the center 1 to 2 inches 1 inches if you, your body is just like me if chubby matambok 2 inches yan so dito yan ito, ito di ba dito parang may butas ito yung sternum pababa di ba ito sternum pag ganun nyo parang may buto na nakausli Sa baba ng buto na yun, yun yung solar plexus. Ito, halimbawa, nakaganan, di ba ito yung chest, ganon, kaganon yan. Dito, sterno, dito sa baba, yan yung solar plexus. Yan yung sor sorok, sinasabi. There is a bundle of nerves which if hurt, causes immediate breathing problems and severe pain. Pag matamangan yan, that is why, di ba? Halimbawa, natutumba ka lang. Pag ito yung tumama sa simento, nahihirapan ka ng huminga. Kasi yun ang solar plexus mo. And sobrang sakit. 